Hi and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. I'm Chuck, KK6USY, and this is Ham Radio Adventures. Today I got something kind of special for you guys. Uh, it could be considered ham radio, but most people won't buy this for ham radio. It's a little bit too big, but it's also for the RV world. And But if nothing else, you'll see how it checks out and how it, how it compares to maybe a lead acid battery. Stick around. Let's check it out. Okay, no, it's not a boom box. What this is, is a battery from Power Queen, and no, it's not in here. It's light, but it's not that light. So this is a battery from a company called Power Queen. I've been checking different ones out from my RV here recently. Let's get rid of that. The Power Queen seemed to, to, to do very well in test, and you'll see today that uh, we'll test this thing and see wow, how it really stacks up. Now, just a dis disclosure, Power Queen did not send me this battery. I paid my own money for it. So all the, everything I say is what I mean and what I really truly feel about this, this part. Uh, actually, all the parts you'll see, I've got an inverter that will be in this and I've got a, uh, a shunt. The shunt is really good for letting you know how much battery you have left. And I bet you will see that it works pretty well. So let's check it out and see how this thing performs. All right, guys, we're going to talk a little bit about the battery first, and then I'll probably get in there and on the computer and show you a few more things. But first of all, this thing was packaged really nice. Uh, got to my house. It had one little dent in the box, but it was fine. It was uh, has foam all the way around it. All right, comes with this. This is basically how you, the do's and don'ts and how you hook up your battery. Uh, it has two sides to it, okay? Pretty nice little thing. But it also comes with a uh, the book. Now the book comes in this nice little case, and I'm probably going to use this case for all the instructions, like for my inverter, my shunt, all that kind of stuff. Also, so let me just read you. And here's the book. It's uh, written very well. Gives you all kinds of different ways of hooking multiple batteries. Say if you want to use this on an off-grid system someplace. Okay, let me just read you some of the specs. Okay, this battery weighs about 64 pounds. I have group 31 batteries in my motorhome right now, three of them, and they weigh about the same as this battery by itself. So I'm losing the weight of two batteries in that battery compartment. The size of it physically is about the same size. I did measure by box, and uh, it's about the same size as the three set side by side. So I had about 300 amp hours with the lead acid batteries. And 300 gives me about 150 of actual usable battery. Now this will give me 100% because 50% on lead acid, 100% on this is what they're claiming. And you'll see that it, it actually holds up to the claim and it, it does pretty well. Uh, it's, a, it's a prismatic LifePo 4. The nominal capacity is 300 amp hours. The usable capacity is 300 amp hours by their claim with a nominal voltage of 12.8. Energy is uh, 3,840 watt hours. The charge voltage is 14.4 volts, plus, plus or minus 0.2, so 14.4. And that's what it started at. Uh, I put it on my Victron charger. Now, my Victron charger only does either three amps or 10 amps, so it's a little small for a 300 amp hour battery, but it gets the job done, and I, I trust it. Now it says recommended charge current is 60 amps. Now max though is 200 amps. Now this has the BMS in it. It's good for discharge of 200 amps continuous and charging of 200 amps continuous. 
the max discharge current for five seconds is 400 amps. So for five seconds, you get that surge. And as long as it didn't last longer than five seconds, it should, it should take care of it. And I have watched this uh, other tests on this guy. So it have a, a better ways of testing that type of stuff, which I don't, I mean, I could, but later on maybe, but, uh, and it's, it pretty much passed. That's the reason I bought this, this, this battery. Now, AGMs right now, uh, three of those would cost me about what this battery cost and the life expectancy is not quite as good. And they still, I'm pretty sure AGMs, you can't use more than 50%. Okay, so max continuous load power is 2560 uh, watts. The internal impedance is 40 ohms. Uh, let's see, dimensions. Okay, it is 20.47 inches long, 10.59 in inches wide, and 8.6 inches, 8.66 inches tall. So about the size of a Group 2731 battery, height and, well, height and width one way, not the full length though. Okay, temperature range, oh, oh it's IP, it's protection class is IP65. Uh, charge in Fahrenheit is 30, uh, 32 degrees to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. That's zero to 50 in Celsius. Uh, so discharge is minus four degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And then that's minus 20 to 60 in Celsius. And for storage, they want you to have it anywhere between 14 degrees and 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And then 10 or minus 10, excuse me, to uh, 50 degrees Celsius. All right, let's check it out. All right, so here's uh, what the battery looks like. It's pretty big. It's about the size of 300 amp hour batteries. Now I bought this for my motorhome. I have a 32 foot diesel pusher. Uh, it's older, uh, but it had three batteries in it. And that's what I have right now. I got 300 amp hour batteries, but they're lead acid. I'm getting about three to four years life out of them. They have uh, solar on them right now and uh, like a 100 watt panel. But if you see the, it shows you everything here. 12.8 volt, 300 amp hours, 38, 40 on the watt hours. There we go. So what I'm gonna hook this up to now, let me show you. So I bought a, a cable for it, guys. It's uh, 18 inch. The reason I went 18 inches, I, in my motor home, the batteries are in one compartment, but right next to it is an enclosed compartment where this is gonna go, the shunt and the inverter that I'll show you in a minute also. This is the, uh, the shunt that I'm gonna use. It's made by Renergy. This is the wire. It's, it's uh, that hooks to the battery or to the shunt and then hooks to the monitor. This is the monitor, the shunt, and then a little power lead for the 12 volt battery. Let me uh, show you the inverter we're gonna use. Okay, so here is the inverter out of the box. It's a pretty good size, pretty heavy guys. Uh, hopefully there's not too much reflection there on it for you. Uh, let me back off just a little bit. There we go. It says pure wine, same, same stuff that was on the side of the box. Here are the battery connectors, fairly beefy, uh, positive and negative. Got the fans in the back. You have two on the front, you have two plugs. Uh, this is a ground. This is hooks your, uh, your remote control to it, your USB. It only has one USB, a switch to turn it on, and LED lights to tell you what's going on. It came with two cables, positive and negative. Okay, we have the remote control here. Now it's just a panel that goes inside someplace and that just turns it on and off and it tells you if there's a fault. It just uses phone cable, guys. Okay, now I have the battery hooked up. It's showing zero out right now on the inverter. 13.4 volts, okay. Now here's the shunt. The shunt is showing 300 amp hours, 100%. 13.4 volts, just like the, in, the inverter, and uh, 99. almost 100 hours of uh, use left in the battery at this point, and that's at 0.41 amps. The 0.41 amps is the inverter itself being turned on. It had zero when I was turned off, and it's about five and a half volts. I gotta find something we can hook to this thing and see if we can run this battery down and see how it works. All right, for power consumption, the biggest con power consumption on my motorhome, most of the time the way I use it 
is my heater and the fan on the heater. Not so much the heater, because that's propane, but the fan that blows the hot air around uh, consumes most of my power most of the time. That, along with lights. So what I'm going to do here is this fan is simulating, and I don't think it puts out anything near or, or draws anything near what my motorhome does. All right, guys, I added, now I have a, um, what do I have, the fan? It has two fans on it. I also have a, t a small TV. And the TV is just in, basically it's on, but it's no, there's no, nothing on the TV itself. And then I added a light bulb, so we're at 12.2 amps. Now we're down to 24 hours and 16 minutes. The battery shows uh, 298 if you look at the amp hours, and it shows that everything right now is discharge. And it shows, if you look at the 12.2 amps, it shows negative. That means everything right now is going out, nothing coming in, or it's not keeping up, which I don't have anything hooked to it, so it's, nothing is coming in. And it still shows the battery at uh, 100%. That will probably go down when it hits 290. So we'll check back and uh, see how this thing's doing. Let me check my time right now. Yeah, it's probably been on for 15 minutes, and so about 12:30. All right, we'll see. Uh, we'll come back in an hour or two and see how it looks. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Uh, yeah, you can. Looks like 17 point uh, 17 hours 46 minutes. Now that is uh, also plus 30 more minutes. I forgot to turn this on. I was 30 minutes into it. I knew what time I started, so pretty accurate there. All right, the battery right now is uh, at 54 amp hours left. At, uh, at six and a half hours, I changed my load on it. I went from 12.1 to 14.4 amps out. And um, it says we have 18% battery left there, guys. It says it'll go another three hours and 47 minutes. So the battery, nothing on the battery is warm, guys. This uh, inverter has run the whole time. As far as I know, the inverter has never the, the fan on it has never come on. I mean, it's it's physically warm. It's not hot at all. I mean, it's not even, you can put your baby's hand on there and not burn it. Now the cables have gotten hot. Now this is the wire that goes to the shunt. And that goes to the, this little box here to give power to the, uh, I think it's for the meter itself. And then everything else. Anything that you add in line has to go here, guys. So my inverter's coming to this side of it. That's the only real draw I have on this because it's just sitting here on a table. We'll check back when this is over and uh, see how it does. Okay, guys. Um, you can see right there we have 23 amp hours left. 7%. And it's supposed to last for another hour and 34 minutes. We're at 12.6 volts. Still running 14.6 amps and 184 watts. So here we go with the actual time. We're 19 hours, 58 minutes, and plus 30 minutes. I turned this on 30 minutes into the test. So we're 19 and a half, or 20 and a half hours almost. It says it has two minutes left. We're 11.1 .1 volts. It's just, here's the uh, time on it now. That is plus 30 minutes, so almost 22 hours. Let's just see what happens. Now, I have no idea if this is, when, it's, when it goes to zero minutes left, if it's just gonna stop or it's gonna keep going. But I will try to run it until the fan stops at least. So it says zero minutes now. Still running. We are at uh, 11 volts. So true to form, these batteries hold their voltage. It held 13.1 for a long time. Started at 13.4 until we had a, a little bit of time on it. But now we're almost, oops, now we're almost at 22 hours. I may stop it there just because it'll give us a, even though it's still going, since it says zero on everything now, that'll give us an even time on everything. It would be 22 hours total. Okay, that's 22 hours. Okay guys, so I, I wrote some stuff down. We had six hours and 158 watts. So that's six times 158 equals. So we get 948. And then we had 16 and a half hours. 
and that was at 185 watts. So times 185 equals, and then we're going to do plus the 948 that we already had, and equals. And then now we're going to divide this by the uh, the nominal battery voltage, which is 12.8. So we hit divided. And I guess it's 312 amp hours, uh, 312 and a half. Uh, this is not exact science. I mean, I did the best I could with what I have here. Uh, it'd be nice to have one of those uh, battery testers like Ape has, but uh, that's just the way it is. Now, I did let the thing run. I had to see how long it's longer. It ran about seven more minutes after the 22-hour uh, point, so it actually did a little bit farther that I didn't count in this. Um, and, uh, and then it just went off. Uh, the buzzer went off in the um, inverter, and everything just shut off. So let's get back. Let's finish this up. Okay, guys, uh, I hope this, this video is of value to somebody. I mean, this is the kind of stuff I was looking for when I was looking for batteries for my RV. I, I got tired of every two, to, you know, three to four years having to replace them. These are supposed to last at least 10 years. And when you start looking at the price, an AGM right now costs over th about $300. I was running regular lead asses. They were close to 200 a piece, I think, the last time I bought them. And this thing was right around $1,000. So pretty close to the same price as an AGM, but better. I'm pretty sure that an AGM battery is only f worth 50% of its capacity. So what I did gain was double my capacity with the same size battery. Okay, I wasn't really surprised that this thing was gonna pass because I've watched other reviews of the Power Queens and they seem to do pretty well. So again, I hope this was of value to you guys. My name's Chuck. This is KK6USY Ham Radio Adventures. I hope to get you guys in the airways and uh, 73 all, be safe.